So this video is to show you how to take this template of this mystery picture and insert your own problems and change the conditional formatting so that the answers to your problems will work for your students. So this is the blank template um, where I have no questions actually entered that would be for you to do and all of the answers are currently set at one. And what that means is that when a student enters their answers in these 12 boxes down here, right now, all the correct answers are set to one. So if I insert one into all of these, what you can see is that mystery picture is showing up. And I'm going to zoom out so you can actually see all of it. And so if I put in the correct answer of one for all 12, the entire picture of Mario and the star is seen on the screen. So you're going to want to do two things as a teacher. You're going to change all the conditional formatting for the 12 questions, as well as insert the picture for all 12 questions. And I have the 12 questions down here at the bottom in tabs. Um, the other thing is that you can actually just click on the question number one, and it's a short um, link to the question. Same down here, I can click on the mystery picture and it will direct me straight back, um, or I can go between the tabs. So the first thing we want to do is upload the picture in this spot that says question one that's empty. Um, over here, I've left it empty for students to actually upload their work. If that's not something you need for the Pacific activity that you're doing, you can always highlight all of those rows and hit delete, um, and that way it's just the question. Um, but for you as a teacher, you're going to upload the question, the picture into the box that says question one. So I'm going to go to a worksheet that I've used in past years. I normally print it out and give my students a paper copy. And I'm going to snip, using the snipping tool, this picture right here. Find the slope from its graph. So I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to save it. And I'll call it question one. And it's saved to my pictures on my computer. And I'm going to go back to the template and I'm going to follow the same directions I've given the students um, to insert picture. So I'm going to click on the box where I want the picture, insert, image, image in cell. And then I have saved the image to my computer. So I'm going to hit browse and I'm going to go find question one. There it is, and hit open. Um, and it will automatically upload it here in my image. If you were, had your image in your Google Drive, you would do the same steps, insert, image, image in cell, and then you would go to Google Drive and you can search for it if you know the name or if it's recent. Um, and once you find your picture and select it, you'll just hit insert. Um, once it's in here, um, in this case, my picture is pretty clean and easy to see, but if it was too big or too small, I can always adjust the width of the columns, either bigger or smaller, and you can do the same to the rows. Okay, um, but there's my picture. I would do that for all 12 questions and upload that picture. And then now I'm ready to change the formatting for um, the picture for those pieces of the picture to show up. So I need to know my answer. So in this case, my slope is negative four over two, which reduces to negative two. One thing to keep in mind with the conditional formatting is it does need to be a either um, integer um, or a terminating decimal. Um, fractions like two thirds or 0 0.666 repeating, um, when you do the conditional formatting of two uh, forward slash three, it doesn't work with the conditional formatting. Of course, I could put 0 0.6 or 0 0.66, but I would have to tell the kids how many decimals. So if you do want to do two thirds, you would say, um, write your answer or type in your answer to uh, as a decimal rounded to the nearest thousands or hundreds. Um, and you could enter answers like that. But for this question, my answer is negative two is what it reduces to. So I'm going to go back to the picture. And this was question number one. So I'm going to click on the answer box. 
Um, and right now it is number one. Um, the template is just empty. Oops. Um, and it doesn't really matter if you have the one there or not. So this is the template. So I'm going to click on the answer box for number one. And I'm going to go up to format, conditional formatting. Be really careful. I've accidentally in the past hit clear formatting because it's the C. Um, just like conditional, um, and that would be a bad thing. So click on conditional formatting, and it's going to open up the formula that I've inserted for number one. And what you notice is at the very end, it says one, which was the answer that I gave. But my correct answer now is negative two. So I'm just going to type in negative two. Um, the box, if it's blue, means that the formula is okay. If I, right now, it's just a negative, and you see that the box is red, and that won't work. So negative two is my answer, and all I have to do is click done. And you can kind of see this is all of the boxes that will turn the color dark grayish when I've inserted the answer. So I can double check it by typing in my answer negative two clicking off of it, and you see that it works, okay? Um, so I'm gonna run through it a little bit faster with question number two, just to kind of show you how this works again. So I'm gonna go to my worksheet, and I am going to take a snipping tool picture of my problem and save it to my computer. I'm going to go to the template and go to question number two. And I'm going to click on the empty box where I want my question. I'm going to hit insert, image, image in cell. And then I'm going to find my picture and hit open. And it will upload it for me. It's a little big, but it's, I think, fine for the students. And then I need to know my answer. So this answer would be um, 8 over 2, which reduces to 4. 3 to 11 is 8. 0 to 2 is 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So now I'm going to go back to the mystery picture. And for question number 2, if I already had the commission conditioning formatting rules up, it will pop. But again, you would go to format, conditional forming, and this will pop up. I'm going to select that conditional formatting and change one to the correct answer of four um, and hit done. Then I can check my answer by typing in the answer of four and it is correct. Okay. And so you would want to do that for all 12 problems, inserting the image and changing the conditional formatting. Once you're completely done with that, you will want to delete your work. Um, so it's now the student version and you can rename it um, student copy or student version. And now you're ready to upload this to your um, Schoology or your um, Google Classroom or wherever you're assigning it to your students. Hope this helps.